Hey everybody, Brian the Intern here with my top 50 moments of the John Calipari era. And I started with number 50, UK being the first team to reach 2,000 wins in 2009, a big accomplishment for the program in John Calipari's first year. Number 49, John Wall hits the game winner against Miami of Ohio in his first game as a Kentucky Wildcat, an amazing start to his career, obviously. Number 48, Malik Monk caught laughing on the bench during a blowout loss to Florida. A controversy certainly amongst the fans, although that team turned out to be quite good, so not a big deal for Monk at the end of the day. Number 47, just this past year, UK suffered its worst conference loss in history, losing to South Carolina at Rupp Arena, certainly a low point in that, in that season. Number 46, UK beats an undefeated Wichita State in the 2014 NCAA tournament, probably one of the best NCAA tournament games in UK history. Number 45, PJ Washington misses 12 free throws in a 2018 NCAA tournament loss. He actually had an amazing game uh, that year against Kansas State, but those 12 free throws proved crucial and the Cats fell surprisingly to the Wildcats. Number 44, John Robick, no longer an assistant with the UK program. Certainly his departure has been impactful for John Calipari's team over the last few years, both an influence with Cal and potentially in game planning and recruiting. Number 43, Cats lose to South Carolina in Columbia in 2014, but after the game, Aaron Harrison says, it's going to be a great story. And of course, he proved prophetic as that team made the, the championship game. Number 42, Oscar Schwebe wins National Player of the Year in 2022. One of the few UK players to ever achieve that. And number 41, Zion Williamson chooses Duke over Kentucky and Clemson in 2018. I think if you think the program is in decline recently, that could be a key moment where, where uh, you think John Calipari has started to lose his grip a little bit. One of the first big recruiting battles that Calipari has ever lost. And as reports go, Cal thought they were actually gonna get him on the day he, he signed with Duke. Number 40, Dante Allen scores 23 points at Mississippi State. Obviously a miserable season there. And people forget Cal was ejected in that game. And that's what led to Dante Allen playing a lot, scores 23. And the fans have never proven themselves right over Cal more than that day. Number 39, Brandon Knight hits a game winner against number one Ohio State in the 2011 NCAA tournament. I think if that shot occurs later in the tournament, it's one of the most historic shots in UK history, but nonetheless beats the number one overall seed Ohio State, and Brandon Knight kind of becomes a legend after that. Number 38, this year's final game, the loss to Kansas State in the round of 32. Uh, just another loss that was disappointing to UK fans and certainly puts Cal a little bit on the hot seat moving forward. Number 37, De'Aaron Fox scores 39 points over UCLA in the 2017 NCAA tournament. One of the best individual performances in UK history. Number 36, Cats lose to Robert Morris in the NIT in 2014. I think many fans were happy to see that season end, but it was quite embarrassing to lose on Robert Morris's home floor in the NIT to close out that year. Number 35, the Cats crush Kansas in the Champions Classic in the 2014-2015 season. I think after that game, we knew we had something special. Obviously that team proved it for the rest of that year. Number 34, Ennis Cantor ruled ineligible in 2011. When Ennis Cantor's ruled ineligible, I think Cats fans were ready to ride with Cal to the ends of the earth and prove that the NCAA was against Kentucky and against Cal. And you have to wonder if Cantor had been able to play on that team, a team that makes the Final Four without him, would they potentially have won that title that year? But number 33, UK fails to hit a three-pointer for the first time in 1,047 games. That happened in the 2018 NCAA tournament, a game they actually won against Davidson, so people sometimes forget that that occurred. Number 32, Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd Gilchrist become the first teammates to ever go 1-2 in the NBA draft. And number 31, the Cats drop one of the biggest regular season games in NCAA history, falling to Evansville in 2019. Let's not forget Evansville went on to go winless in their conference in the Missouri Valley. Number 30, maybe the most dominating half in UK history, the Cats lead UCLA 41 to seven at the CBS Classic in 2014. Truly one of the best displays of basketball over 20 minutes we've ever seen and might never see again. And that team was at its peak at that moment. I'd like to be home by 8.30 see my dogs. Uh, probably not the best comment to make when fans were already a little bit on edge about the direction of the program. Cal's probably regretted that and fans still bring that up to this day. Number 28, DeMarcus Cousins put back in the SEC tournament final in 2010. A shot that I still think to this day, some fans think won the game, but in fact just sent it to overtime. UK does go on to win that game. One of the best celebrations 
uh, in the Cal era, certainly with that Cousins put back. Number 27, Cats are stunned by Auburn in the Elite Eight in 2019. A team they had beaten twice pretty handily during the regular season. An Auburn team that had lost its best player in the previous game, but just another in a long line of disappointing tournament losses for Calipari. Number 26, Aaron Harrison's three sends the Cats to the Final Four over Michigan in 2014. That game in Indianapolis and Aaron Harrison's uh, Amazing run of shots. That was the second one after beating U of L the two nights before. Uh, just an incredible shot with a hand in his face to send him to the to the Final Four and keep that amazing run going. Number 25, Anthony Davis's last second block over North Carolina in 2011. Uh, the hype surrounding that game for a regular season game was probably one of the most hyped games in UK history. And then it finished amazingly. And I think Anthony Davis's legend really started to grow from that moment on with his last second block. Number 24, Nerlens Noel tears his ACL against Florida in 2013. We don't know how that season would have actually finished with him on the team, but once he was done, that team was toast. They ended up losing most of their games the remainder of the season and then lost to Robert Morris in the NIT. And one of the few times in the Cal era where a significant injury occurred and really affected the season. Number 23, UK loses to UConn in the 2014 national title game. Kind of a dud finish to that season after an amazing couple of weeks of Aaron Harrison shots and beating UofL in the Sweet 16. I think Cats fans had almost uh, concluded that they were going to win that national title and then they lose to a seven seed in the championship. Number 22, Christian Watford shot over Kentucky in 2011. I know it's hard to, to bring that up, but it was a significant moment in, in the Calipari era. And number 21, Malik Monk scores 47 points over UNC in 2016. Likely the best individual performance uh, of the Cal era, certainly in scoring. Uh, Malik Monk could pour it in buckets when he wanted to, and he showed it that day against a very good North Carolina team. Number 20, UK concludes its worst season in school history at 9-16 and 16 with a loss in the 2021 SEC tournament. I think a season that many fans were happy to see end, but still another disappointing loss that ended with a last second attempt that doesn't fall in. Number 19, UK smashes Kansas in Lawrence in 2022. I think you could argue outside of the 2015 season, that was probably the best game that UK has played under John Calipari. Number 18, Aaron Harrison's first historic shot, beating Louisville in the 2014 NCAA tournament, uh, a game that I think UK fans will hold over Cards fans' heads for the rest of our lives. And Harrison hits a great shot, and, and people forget that UK was trailing for that entire game until that shot. That was the first time that UK led. Number 17, Shaden Sharp officially out and not going to play in the 2022 season. Maybe not significant for the team itself, but for how UK handled that situation, I think a lot of fans were already on edge about their relationship with Cal. He was giving them the runaround most of that season about Sharp, and then for him to not play and how that season finished, I think that left a sour taste in a lot of UK fans' mouths for the for the remainder of the Cal era. Number 16, the players kneel before the anthem during the Florida game in 2021. Obviously, from a political standpoint, no bigger moment in UK history. Cal kneels with his team. Uh, it was certainly the movement at the time, but it divided the fan base significantly and along political lines, which is disappointing that a, a sports fan base was divided amongst political lines, but it did uh, cause a lot of fans to probably renounce their fandom and, and maybe not come back until John Calipari is gone. Number 15, the Cats are shocked by West Virginia in the Elite Eight in 2010. Uh, that season had gone about as perfect as Cal could have hoped for his first season, but then it ends in the Elite Eight uh, with a, a stunning loss to the Mountaineers. It was a disappointing end to a year, an amazing team, one that will always be one of the favorites of UK fans, but they needed just that one more win to get to the Final Four and it just didn't happen. Number 14, the Harrison Twins announced their return to Kentucky for 2014. If they hadn't come back, does John Calipari stay or does he leave for the Cleveland Cavs? We'll never know. But also that really set the stage for what was one of the best regular seasons in UK history the following year. Number 13, Luke May crushes everybody's dreams in the 2017 Elite Eight hitting a last second shot after the Cats make a great comeback. But Luke May, who at that point, just a role player, hits a last second shot to really uh, crush them. And now considering UK still hasn't made it back to a final four, I think that game proves large in the John Calipari resume. Number 12, UK returns for the final four for the first time in 13 years, beating North Carolina in the 2011 Elite Eight. And then DeAndre Liggins of all people hits the amazing shot uh, to clinch that game in the Elite Eight. And the kiss between him and, and Cal is one of those you know, one of those moments that you'll forever see. And number 11, John Calipari says the 2010 NBA draft is one of the greatest nights in UK history. Um, up to that point, had John Calipari made any mistakes? 
not really. They lost the Elite Eight. That was disappointing. But when he proclaimed that the NBA draft was the greatest night in UK history, I think a lot of fans started to question what his priorities might be for the program. It's worked out. A lot of wins, a national title, several Final Fours. But I think we knew then what Players First truly meant and that the NBA and getting players to the NBA was going to be Cal's top priority. All right, top 10. Number 10, Anthony Davis commits to Kentucky in 2010. He actually committed a year before he uh, left high school. In retrospect, probably the most impactful player in UK history, certainly under John Calipari. Number nine, John Calipari creates a firestorm amongst the fans claiming UK is a basketball school. Obviously, uh, conflict between him and Mark Stoops is never gonna be a good thing. It was fun to talk about over the summer. All in all, not a good thing for the athletic program to have the basketball and football programs in dispute. Number eight, the NCAA tournament is canceled due to COVID. Obviously, a huge moment just in society and across the world, but for, for John Calipari's sake, what would that team have done in the NCAA tournament? Number seven, Aaron Harrison, his third straight shot beats Wisconsin in the final four uh, in 2014. I think many people loved the Louisville shot more because you were beating your rival, but to win a game in the final four with under five seconds to go, you have to say that has more impact to the program. Number six, UK loses by 34 to Duke and Zion in the Champions Classic in 2018. Till we saw it on the floor, I don't think we knew totally the impact that losing guys like Zion, like RJ Barrett was gonna have. We saw in full force, I think, that Duke had surpassed Kentucky as a program at that moment. They were getting the kind of players that UK typically got, and that was probably the most embarrassing moment. Number five, UK beats UofL in the Final Four in 2012. There will not be a game that is hyped up with more anxiety leading into it than Kentucky playing Louisville in the Final Four. Um, and it was pretty much all on the cat side. UofL was a surprise participant in the Final Four that year, but UK handled its business. Anthony Davis was the best player on the floor by a large margin, and UK got a win. If they lose that game, we might not ever recover. Number four, Big Blue Madness 2009, the official start of the John Calipari era. We had several huge moments in UK history there. Number one, the John Wall dance, which uh, people still do to this day, kind of made John Wall an icon before he'd ever stepped foot on the court at UK. And then we had the John Calipari speech at the beginning. We got gold standard from that. We got Paducah to Pikeville. We had so many great one-liners from there. And I think that was the moment that UK fans knew okay, this thing is back on track. Number three, Cats lose to St. Peter's in the 2022 NCAA tournament. One of the biggest upsets in NCAA tournament history, one that the Cats will never get off their resume, even after Calipari is gone from the program. Uh, you lose that game with the National Player of the Year against a team that was one of the smallest in the country and what came from one of the weakest conferences in the country. Number two, UK loses to Wisconsin in the 2015 Final Four. So many aspects of this loss to Wisconsin you can bring into it. If UK is able to win that game and win the title two days later, a 40-0 season, something that John Calipari would carry with him to his grave. It would probably be the top line of his resume whenever he passes, that his team, he would have the last undefeated team in college basketball history. But just truly one of the more crushing losses in UK history. And lastly, it has to be number one, UK wins national title number eight against Kansas in 2012. No matter all of the negative things that have potentially happened over Cal's tenure, winning a national title will always be the one that brings the most impact to Kentucky. He adds to the history and the legacy of Kentucky, becomes just another UK coach to bring a national title in. He does it in just three years. I think after that national title, UK fans would be shocked to learn that he hasn't won another one since. But in that moment, with Anthony Davis as maybe the most iconic player in UK history, Calipari had reached the pinnacle, his own personal pinnacle, which many uh, college basketball journalists and fans never thought he could get to. So all in all, just a, a an amazing moment for him, an amazing moment for the program, and my pick for the number one most impactful moment of the John Calipari era.